Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to be covering a uh, night rendering, which is something I'm still working on improving, but uh, I'll try to give you some tips and uh, things to try to work towards. This is the final rendering. Uh, we'll work our way backwards from here on how we got here. And this is all we really need to get out of Rhino before we take it into Photoshop. I think you could probably spend hours and hours and hours messing around with kind of light qualities and conditions and environments and, and V-Ray. Um, but really just moving on over to Photoshop and, and doing a little color correction is all you really need to do. So to get to this point, uh, I made up a pretty simple model. Um, let me go to this view here. It's just these uh, three kind of shed buildings. I've got glass uh, here, a wood roof, concrete for the floor and the walls. Uh, we've repeat that three times. Then I have just kind of this undulated terrain that I've put a grass material on. Uh, if we go into plan, You'll see I have three spot or sorry point lights inside of each of the buildings. I also have two rectilinear lights. Uh, they're at the face of the glass. No matter how bright the inside is, I never was able to get kind of the nice glow outside, so I just put a simple invisible light here that will shine out. So we'll talk about that too. And there's another one on this building. There's not one on this building because I really don't care. Lastly, there's an actual sunlight system, and it's just been turned way, way down so it mimics nightlife. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just talk about materials. If I go into the render view here, you can see I've got, there's the concrete, the wood, the glass is showing up as black, but that's fine. So we go to the materials panel here, we can work our way through it. So the clear glass, uh, this is just, again, you can watch the materials tutorial I have, but I just imported an existing material, which is their clear glass that comes with V-Ray. Uh, I made a couple corrections to it. One, I brought the transparency down from pure white to just a 277 or 227 here. It's a light shade of gray, which will mean that it's a little bit frosted, but not entirely. The same with the refraction transparency. I dropped that a little bit so that it's not, you know, super clean. Everything else is exactly the same. Uh, I, I think with perfectly clean glass, sometimes it's hard to tell where it is. Uh, the next part here is uh, the concrete which I just have a concrete map uh, from vraymaterials.de. I have no bump map or anything on that. It's not something I was really concerned with in this rendering. For the wood, uh, same issue here. Uh, we have the wood diffuse map, and also it came with a bump map, and the bump map, it's important to note, is set to just 0 0.01 multiplier. It's just a very light grain that's been put on the wood. Uh, a new one is, is the grass. Uh, I wanted to have a lawn, and, and having just a flat gray plane was making the rendering look really bad. Having some natural landscape that would absorb light really helped to improve the realism. As you can see here in my preview, it's really pretty wild. Uh, again, I've just got a diffuse map, which is the grass, looks like that. And I have a displacement map. When I went into displacement map, uh, I actually set this to uh, noise. And it's not a JPEG or a bitmap or anything, it's just a noise field. And I was able to tell it that I wanted white to black using Perlin noise, an amplitude of 8, a frequency of 15, and a size of 0.25. Uh, here it's set at 0.065, this is really low, so I'm going to change this to 1, and you can see it's just noise, like you'd expect on maybe an old television set if you weren't receiving a signal. The 0.065 is how much height it changes, so that's the, the displacement of the, the actual surface, so it will stand up. And I don't think that really converts to inches or any, any unit, um, but it's just how much displacement is needed. So using that, you can see I kind of get this furry orb, and when I put it on the ground, I'll actually get specular light spilling out on it. So that's the materials. Uh, those have all been mapped. If I go to texture mapping, uh, each of these has, has had to be changed so that the materials wrap properly. If you're not familiar with that, you can watch the tutorial on texture mapping. Uh, so that brings us to the lights. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hide these, and we can look inside. And go to the shaded mode here. I've got these three point lights, and when we came in, uh, I, need to, I need to set up the light. And so I come to the light properties here, uh, and they're set to kind of this warm tan color. I don't want bright white light. Uh, more likely than not, it's going to be incandescent, so some orange to reddish hue is nice. And it's got a multiplier of 0.5, it's not super bright. Um, and then I also have shadows enabled, but that's not a big deal. And that's the same for all of these lights. The next piece is this rectangle light here. And again, I go to object properties and then down to light. This has got a multiplier of 2. 
It's set to invisible. This is a really important feature. I don't want to be seeing the light when I render, um, which it would show up as a plane. So I set it to invisible. Also set it to double-sided. This will actually shoot some light back into this room. Um, and it initially has a no decay. So it's just the same quality of light all the way out. We want to take that off so it actually does fade off. Uh, that's exactly the same as this light over here. They're copies of one another. The third and final type of light is this. It's the sunlight system, which we get from V right here. Um, you know, I set it up just like anything else, as if it's going to be the daytime. So from the southwest, somewhat high in the sky, place it in the scene, and I come in to the object light properties. I've done two things. I've increased the turbidity to five. This is going to be much hazier of light. I've increased the size to 60, so any shadows that come off of it are going to be pretty soft. But more importantly, I set the intensity multiplier to 0 0.01, so really the sun's barely shining. But it is something that we'd, we'd know we'd see. Um, I think there's a common mistake with night renderings is that it's pitch black, and that's never really the case. There's always some atmospheric level of light. Um, to help accomplish that, uh, we had to go in to the settings. Uh, my camera settings physical is turned on, you know, a, a low shutter speed, 55, meaning the lens is open for a while. Uh, I've turned vignetting off because I don't want to add any additional darkness to the scene, and I've dropped the white balance to kind of a light purple color that helps bring out kind of that moonlight quality. The other thing here is uh, this environmental mapping here. Uh, the GI skylight is typically you just set as one. It's kind of that blue sky that we're familiar with in the daytime, but that won't work for night. So what I had done is gone into Photoshop, and I'll pull that up now. There's the final rendering, we'll get to that in a second. But in Photoshop, I just made a JPEG from dark purple to light purple. That's going to be our GI. This is what's going to illuminate the scene. So the very first initial renderings were really pretty heavily purple, so I dropped that down to 0.1, and as you can see, I just put it in as a bitmap, mapped it in, and there's that purple gradient right there. It's also set to be an environment, so it's spherical and wraps around the scene. Uh, so again, I dropped this down. I was also trying to have some type of night reflections in the glass, but never really got there. In the end, it wasn't important to me, so this doesn't really matter. You can turn off this reflection layer. Um, so with all of that, you know, I ran the rendering. This is what I got. It took uh, about 21 minutes, and most of that is going to be because of the grass texture down here. You can see kind of the specularness of the light hitting off these taller and shorter pieces. And that, to me, was something I was trying to chase after. So I exported that. I also exported the alpha so I can easily replace the sky background and brought it into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, <clears throat> there's my rendering. I also had this night sky that I had downloaded. So coming in and selecting my alpha, hitting control and clicking the icon here, I can control shift I and select the inverse. Uh, and out of my base rendering, I just deleted that background, which then let me put in, let's turn all this stuff off and talk about it piece by piece. There's my base rendering, no background. There's the sky, which I thought looked a little cartoony, so I put a black layer in. On top of it, about 50% opaque. You can see as I change this, we get more brightness, darkness. Uh, I felt somewhere around 50% was pretty good. Uh, then I did some color correction on everything thus far. So I did some brightness, which brought out you know some of the light did some saturation, which helped kind of adjust uh, this light and shadow. Did a photo filter, and I think this one's really important. I used a cooling filter of 80, and a 64%. It's pretty heavy, but you can see that it's really taken on kind of this blue tone, um, which to me resembles more of a moonlight condition. I also did some color balance that brought up a little bit of the blues and greens and the shadow and the mid-tone. So there was the scene. Uh, the next thing I did was to add a uh, glow and a hue, so this was just done with a soft brush that I dropped down to 10%. Uh, so this was a good way to have kind of that shine that I was looking for. Uh, and lastly, I just added some entourage trees, which I have from, uh, you know, just another file. Uh, this one here, I had to come in and do color correction also because it was bright green and it totally looked out of place. Let's see, and then uh, layer 6, I just added a little bit of grass. You can see we have these clean edges here. So with the grass brush, uh, which is this one here, I just went in and painted around the edges to clean things up. So as you keep working on this, I, I was finding that uh, using the dodge tool, I can really start to punch some of, some of the light 
levels uh, on the base rendering. And I could probably spend quite a while just working through where I want brightness and darkness. Uh, the same I could come in with the, the burn tool and a soft brush here. And, and uh, let's go to this tree and start to actually darken maybe some of this face uh, to help you know, blend it away. Um, but that's it. Uh, as you can see, kind of from the base rendering to the final product, it was all done in Photoshop. There was just some basics that had to be set up in V-Ray. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions, go ahead and shoot me an email, and I'll try to get to them. Uh, I get a, quite a few these days, and i uh, still trying to finish up school myself, but pretty soon uh, I'll be having more time to spend on these tutorials. Thanks.